Shalom, shalom, family. I'm back with another revelation um, from the Most High. I want to give all praise to the Most High, to our brother Christ, and to the Holy Spirit. There are three that bear record in heaven, and these three are one. Um, I got a revelation today. I want to say the trumpets are about to sound. The trumpets are about to sound. I was read to Numbers 9, 11, and I've been wondering why I've been seeing 911. I was seeing it around Christmas time, and I thought it had something to do with Christmas time. And then I start getting scriptures about spring, spring forth, spring forth, and I was supposed to do a video on it, but um, I didn't actually get a chance to do a video on it at that time. Um, but we are in the springtime now, and I want to talk to you guys about this. So we are um, going in the second month. So today would be the second first day of the second month tomorrow or tomorrow. And then on some people's calendar, you know, depending on how they're keeping it, they would actually count today as the 14th day. Um, but today is the first first day of the month. Okay, and uh, I want to read of the second month and I want to read something to you guys um, because of 9-11 and I actually had just seen 9-11 again and it reminded me that I needed to do this video. Um, so and this is numbers nine. I'm going to start at nine, but number is 11 is the main verse I want to point out. So I said, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, if any man of you or of your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body or be in a journey afar off, yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. Remember, it was saying the kingdom um, of God is like a country far off. Remember that scripture and the parable about um the Messiah taking a far journey, a man who took a far journey, remember? Yeah, he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. The 14th day of the second month at the even, they shall keep it and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. So this is the second Passover. Um, This is for people who are unclean or on a journey afar off. They shall leave none of it unto the morning. So 9-11, now in the NIV, this verse say the 14th day of the second month at twilight. See, this say at evening, they shall keep it. But it say at twilight, <clears throat> they shall keep it and eat unleavened bread and bitter herbs. That stood out to me. They shall leave none of it until the morning, nor break any bone of it. According to all the ordinance of the Passover, they shall keep it. But the man that is clean and is not in a journey and forbeareth to keep the Passover, even the same soul shall be cut off from among his people because he brought not the offering of the Lord in his appointed season. That man shall bear his sins. And if a stranger shall sojourn among you and will keep the Passover unto the Lord, according to the ordinance of the Passover and according to the manner thereof, so shall he do. Ye shall have one ordinance, both for the stranger and for him that was born in the land. One ordinance. And I did a video earlier talking about the Sabbath and how everybody got to keep the Sabbath. In Isaiah 56, the, the Messiah did say those who are going to the Holy Mount are those who keep the Sabbath. The stranger too. Same thing he's saying right here. And it say, he say, don't separate yourself. You're grafted into Israel. So saying the same thing right here, um, both for the stranger and for him that was born in the land. And, and on that day, the tabernacle was reared up. The cloud covered the tabernacle, namely, namely the tent of the testimony. And at even at twilight, there was upon the tabernacle, as it were, the appearance of fire until the morning. So it was always the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. And when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, then after the children of Israel journeyed, and in the place where the cloud abode, there the children of Israel pitched their tents and the commandment of the Lord 
the children and the commandment of the Lord, the children of Israel journey. And at that commandment of the Lord, they pitched as long as the cloud abode upon a tabernacle, they rested in their tents. And when the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle, many days, then the children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and journeyed not. Okay. So it say when the cloud tarried, now this cloud was the Messiah. This, I'm not going to go over those scriptures to, to right now. I'm just trying to make the point to you guys. This is all stuff you can look up. Um, but the Lord was the person who was in the cloud with us when he brought us out of Egypt. Yes, that was Jesus. That's the, that's another story. You can watch my last video. Um, what did I talk about? Wrap the news. And so I was explaining to him the same thing. Okay, when the cloud tarry, so you know it talk about the scripture about the Messiah tarrying. Now, this is the same thing. When the cloud tarry, long upon the tabernacle, many days, then the children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and journeyed not. So they kept the commandments while they waited for the Messiah. We need to be keeping the commandments and the Sabbath. And so it was when the cloud was a few days upon a tabernacle, according to the commandment of the Lord, they abode in their tents. According to the commandment of the Lord, we have commandments now. The according to the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed not. And so it was when the cloud abode from even unto the morning and that the cloud was taken up in the morning when they journeyed, whether it was by day or by night that the cloud was taken up, they journeyed. Or whether it were two days or a month or a year that the cloud tarried upon a tabernacle remaining thereon, the children of Israel abode in their tents and journeyed not. But when it was taken up, they journeyed at the commandment of the Lord. See, when it was when the cloud, when he was with them, they journeyed not. But, you know, but when he went up, they journeyed. And the commandment of the Lord that they rested in the tents and at the commandment of the Lord, they journey. They that kept charge of the Lord at the commandment of the Lord by the hand of Moses. Now, before I get to the next chapter, I want to go back to like chapter six, because right at this time is when the children of Israel get sealed. Um, and to say that, hold on. I didn't load y'all. I think it's like chapter six, maybe it's seven. It's like the last verse. Yeah, and they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. So it's the same thing that happening when the 144,000 get sealed on their forehead. Okay. Now let's go back to Numbers 9. We're going to go to the next chapter, number 10, because this is start talking about the trumpets now. And this is why I'm telling y'all that the trumpets is about to blow. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver of a whole piece. Shalt thou make them, that thou mayest use them for the calling of the assembly and for the journeying of the camps. And when they shall blow with them, all the assembly shall assemble themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And if they blow, but with one trumpet, then the princes, which are heads of the thousands of Israel, shall gather themselves unto thee. That's the 144,000. And when ye blow an alarm, the camps that lie on the east part shall go forward. When you blow an alarm the second time, then the camps that lie on the south side shall take their journey. They shall blow an alarm for their journeys. But when the congregation is to be gathered together, ye shall blow, but ye shall not sound an alarm. And the sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow the trumpets, and they shall be to you for an ordinance forever throughout your generations. And if you go to war, listen to this, if you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresseth you, then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. Okay? Now, the reason why that's important 
Um, also on the days of your gladness and then your solemn days and in the beginning of your months. So right now we're supposed to be blowing the trumpet in the beginning of your months. You shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings that they may be to a memorial before your God. I am the Lord, your God. I am Jesus, your God. Yes, that is what it say. And it came to pass on the 20th day of the second month in the second year that the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle of the testimony. And the children of Israel took their journeys out of the wilderness of Sinai and the cloud rested in the wilderness of Paran. And they first took their journey according to the commandment of the Lord by, by the hand of Moses. In the first place went the standard of the camp of children of Judah according to their armies. And over his host was Nishan, the son of Amenadab. So it's going to, you know, give a list of the camps and the armies. Now, the reason why this is because Israel is just going to war. So it's say. If ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresseth you, then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. Now, I just read to y'all in the scripture yesterday when I said Israel lose the war. <coughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Bless me. I'm going to say Israel lose the war. Let's say, um, listen, let me find that scripture. Let me see if I can find it, y'all. Jeremiah 21. Let's go there. Oh, I might have spelled that wrong, but we talked about this in my last video about Israel's war. The word which came into Jeremiah from the Lord when Zedekiah sent him Peshur, the son of Melchiah, and Zephaniah, the son of Mishaiah, the priest, saying, Inquire, I pray thee of the Lord for us, for Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, maketh war against us. If so be that the Lord will deal with us according to all his wondrous works, that he may go up from us. But what did we discuss? Then said Jeremiah unto them, Thus shall ye say to Zedekiah, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hands, wherewith ye fight against the king of Babylon and against the Chaldeans, which besiege you without walls, and I will assemble them into the midst of the city. This is what's going on right now. Is that what I said? But the flip side is, he's not going to help them this time. He said, and I myself will fight against you with an outstretched hand and, and, and with a strong arm, even in anger and in fury and with great wrath. And I will smite the inhabitants of this city, both man and beast, and they shall die of a great pestilence. So we read that. We talked about that. So this tie into what we talked about, because when they go into war in their own land, what? They need to blow the trumpet. And the trumpets are... About to sound, guys. The trumpets are are about to sound. I'm trying to make sure uh, that that was the only thing that I was supposed to say. If I get any more revelation on this, I'll share with you guys as of right now. I think that was all I needed to say. The trumpets are about to sound.